Welcome to our spring version of Trees in Jefferson Gardens. I'm Sydney, Chairman of the Lemming Society, and I'm standing outside the Wills Road entrance to the gardens, which is adjacent to the Wills Road Bridge built by John Nash. John Nash, think Regent Street in London, very famous architect. Behind me is this wonderful Japanese hybrid cherry. Jefferson Gardens has lots of cherries. They come out at different times and you can always recognise a cherry by looking at the bark of the tree. It has horizontal bandings. Cherries are widespread. There's a wild cherry that's native to the UK. But mostly we think of cherry trees and Japan. Jefferson Gardens has many varieties of cherry trees and I'm standing by the great white cherry. Now this beautiful cherry is the cherry you see on old Japanese prints and pictures. And then, I don't know why, everybody thought it became extinct until in 1920 someone who knew about cherry trees spotted one in a garden in Sussex. And you know, all the other great white cherries in the world now come from that one tree in the Sussex garden, including this beautiful specimen here. This Himalayan birch is next to the great white cherry that we've just looked at. Now, Jefferson Gardens has many silver birches. The Himalayan birch can be easily identified because it has such a smooth silver bark. Many silver birch trees, when they grow old, they get a bit knobbly and the bark cracks, but the Himalayan birch retains this wonderful smooth silvery bark. In fact, in the Himalayas, it's used to write on. In the Himalayas and in India, precious religious writings. It's also used to wrap up pats of butter. The tree itself is extremely useful. It's used in tanning and also for firewood and that has its downsides because in the Himalayas it's been chopped up so much there aren't too many left. We're going to go on to have a look at some of the other birches in Jefferson Gardens too. So here I am underneath the super weeping birch. Now we've looked at blossom trees, <clears throat> but other trees have flowers as well. Don't forget the birch has wonderful catkins. There are two lots. The ones you can see, long hanging ones, are the male ones. The female ones are much smaller, hard to see here. And those are the ones, of course, that will develop into the tiny seeds later on. This is a cut leaf birch and you can see the beautiful feathery leaves. Now silver birches normally don't have leaves with indentations like this. This is a special variety. Very delicate and you can see the catkins again. Another beautiful tree in blossom in the spring is the magnolia. Now the magnolia is a very, very old plant. It existed before the continents drifted apart. So you'll find magnolias in Southeast Asia, Northeast America, the West Indies and Central America. But Europeans didn't know anything about them until they were described in 1703 by Charles Plumier, who found one in the island of Martinique in the West Indies. And he named it after a fellow French botanist, Pierre Magnol. Another indication that it's an ancient plant is the flowers have evolved to be pollinated by beetles, not bees. And also, they don't have a sepal covering the bud. It's a bracket. Now the flowers themselves are, in many species, edible. 
they're usually pickled and used as a delicacy in Southeast Asia. Many magnolias, like this one, are deciduous. And in those cases, the flowers tend to come out before the leaves. But others are evergreen, like the magnificent Grandiflora, which you'll see in many gardens in this country, with huge white flowers in the summer. Now this particular magnolia is near the poppy sculpture in the gardens. The sculpture designed by Tim Tolkien, great nephew of J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote Lord of the Rings. The poppy sculpture is in memory of all involved in World War I, including the widows and orphans.